I Patreon, because I assume that most of the people watching this far into the Old Norse language series are Patreon supporters. It has been a while since I updated the Old Norse language lesson series. Um, you know, these videos take a lot of prep and don't get huge audiences, but that's ungenerous of me because the audience that uh, these videos do get are uh, my most faithful, most generous supporters. So thank you, and um, I'm pleased to be uh, kicking it back off again today in one of the most beautiful places I know of, high up in the Rockies in Colorado. Uh, this video I actually had made an earlier version of for Patreon about the comparison of adjectives. That means, um, you know, we, we've talked about, well, adjectives, how you say big, small, beautiful, but how do you say bigger, smaller, more beautiful, biggest, smallest, most beautiful? That's what we're going to cover in this video. So in English, we have two ways of doing this. We have a way that adds endings and a way that uses the words more and most. So for most short adjectives in English, we use er and ust to show the comparative and the superlative, right? Comparative means more, right? So braver means more brave than some baseline braveness. Bravest is the superlative. It means most brave, the peak braveness. All right. So most short adjectives in English, we just say like braver, bravest, comparative, superlative. Um, I can never think of examples when I, when I need them right. Richer, richest, um, flatter, flattest, higher, highest. Okay. But for uh, longer adjectives, we typically use the words more and most. So we say more beautiful, most beautiful, rather than beautiful or beautiful list. In Old Norse, you basically just use the endings, right? So you always use the er, ust version. So in Old Norse, you'd say the equivalent of beautiful er, beautiful ust, rather than more beautiful, most beautiful. For most adjectives, this is fairly easy. Now, if you're this far into the Old Norse language series, you know that it's not going to be easy, <laughs> but it's fairly easy. So typically, the er ending is ari, and the ust ending is astar. So if you have the adjective Brave, diarver. Braver is diarvari. Bravest is diarvaster. Remember, no matter how long an Old Norse word gets, the emphasis is always on the first syllable. So, that being the case, if you have an adjective skjotar that means fast, swift, quick, what would be faster? That's right, it's skjotari. What would be fastest? Skjotastar. If you have an adjective sterker, it means strong, what is stronger? Sterkari. What is strongest? Sterkaster. Hopefully you got those right. Now, grammar-wise, the comparative is um, a little odd. <laughs> they are only weak, so you never inflect them with strong endings. You may notice, of course, that that letter I at the end, diarpari, skiotari, looks like a masculine, weak, nominative adjective. And it is what it is. So even in situations where you'd actually expect a strong adjective, they're inflected weak. Unfortunately, the weak endings that comparatives use are not exactly the same as the weak endings that other weak adjectives use. So in the masculine singular, they are the normal masculine weak endings. So we go e a a a, diarvari, diarvara, diarvara, diarvara. But then in the plural, all of the endings of the letter I sound E, except for the dative plural, which ends in its accustomed um. So diarvari, 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 diarvorum. In the feminine, all of the endings, singular and plural, are the letter I, the sound E, except the dative plural. So diarvari, 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 diarvorum. In the neuter, the singular always ends in A, the letter A. Diavara, 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 diavara. The plural ends in all letter I, except the data plural um. Diavari, 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 diavarum. I'll have some exercises at the end for you to 
uh, practice inflecting comparatives. Of course, comparatives you'll mostly see in the nominative, um, just because of the way they're used in sentences, because so often it's like, this thing is better than that thing, right? which is nominative. The, the, the verb is, vera in Old Norse. Uh, the to be verb is just an equal sign as far as case goes. Happily, superlatives take completely normal adjective endings. So, djarvas, their bravest, will inflect like any other adjective, strong and weak. So, if you know your adjective endings, that won't be any sort of trouble for you whatsoever. Now, that's your typical adjectives. Unfortunately, some adjectives do take unusual uh, comparative superlative suffixes. Let me give you a quick word from my sponsor in the usual way, and I'll come back and talk about those less regular comparative and superlative adjectives. Now, if you flip through an English dictionary, most of the words that you see are going to have very regular grammar, right? If you look up some obscure verb that you might just happen to land on in the pages of a dictionary, it probably has the past tense ed instead of the oblaut strong verb past tense like take, took, get, got. Same thing with adjectives. Most adjectives you come upon in a dictionary, adjectives like parenthetical or mountainous, right, things that you might not say every hour of every day are going to have normal comparatives. But some of the adjectives that you use the most in your everyday life, in English, as in Old Norse, have irregular comparatives, right? Think about good, you don't say good or goodest, but rather better, best. You don't say bad or baddest, but rather worse, worst. Old Norse is the same way. Some of the most common adjectives don't have comparatives and superlatives, that are formed in the normal pattern. So the first ones to mention are those that don't have the, uh, shall I say, complete suffix, ari, aster, but rather uh, shorter suffix is just ri, ster, added straight to the end of the adjective stem, right? So take off the r from the nominative form that you find in the dictionary, and then add just ri, ster to it directly. However, these adjectives will then have i umlaut, i mutation, on the vowel in their own root. So, some examples of that. The adjective loker, meaning low, we have i mutation in the root, but then we add ri stir directly to the end of the root, the g. So we get comparative lagri, lower, and superlative laxter, lowest. Same thing with langer, long. Comparative lengri, longer, Superlative, langster, longest. Same with skamar, short. What would you expect if I told you this was one of these adjectives? I mutation on the root, re and stir added directly to the root in the comparative and superlative. What would you think for the comparative? It would be skemri, and then superlative, skemstar. Stor, big. What would you expect for comparative? It's stori. And then superlative, biggest, sturster. And then unger, young, what would you expect for the comparative? Ingri, younger. And then superlative, youngest, ingster. All right. Now, there are also, um, I, I guess, kind of belonging in this group. There is gamal, which means old. But gamal is a little bit of an exception because you use a different word for old, actually the same words we use in English for its comparative and superlative, but it's one of these where you get I mutation and then just the re and stir added directly to it. So the word we use in English for old in Old Norse is aldin, but that's an unusual uh, way of saying old in Old Norse. It's, it's a kind of archaic, kind of poetic word. Um, it's used for Odin, um, and at least one occasion. But it does form the normal comparative. So you say gamal old normally, but the comparative is elri, right? Formed from the root in alden or English old, like English elder, right? 
old elder eldest. And then we get the superlative elster. So this is formed from a different root. Also watch out for adjectives that actually have an R in their root. Uh, one of them uh, falls into this category and um, gets I mutation. So fager, beautiful. We have the comparative fegri, and then the superlative fegrster. So the R stays, uh, it doesn't get knocked off because the R is part of the root. We've already seen that in talking about the, the normal inflection of fager, beautiful. Just be aware of it. And of course, it's not fegri with two R's because if you have uh, three or more constants in a row, often you drop the middle one if it is the same as one that it's adjacent to or if the result is more easily pronounceable. All right. But then there are some very common adjectives that have suppletive roots in the comparative and superlative. That means that like gamal, ilri, elster, it's a completely different root that's used in the comparative and superlative from the normal adjective. So gother, good, this will be familiar to you from English, has better betri and best betster. Now, by the way, if you start reading the Wanderers Hovmal in Old Norse, you'll notice that in the Old Norse text of Hovmal, and Hovmal is close to unique in this respect, it is batster without I umlaut on best. That is seen in some other Old Norwegian literature, but it's uncommon in Iceland. So Hovmal does have batster typically. I think it's like one betster, but it's typically batster, not betster without I umlaut on that. Bad, iller, of wonder, as comparative very, worst, worse, and verster, superlative, worst. Little, little, has comparative mini, littler, and minster, smallest, littlest. Mikkel, big, has comparative meiri, bigger, and superlative mester, biggest. Marker, mini, has comparative fleiri, more, and flester, most. Now, in many situations, meiri and fleiri, mester and flester, will be translated respectively more and most in English. We don't distinguish between a like, qualitative more and a quantitative more, but Old Norse and the modern Scandinavian languages do. Here's a trick. Even though you would often translate meiri and fleiri both as more and mester and flester both as most, if it's countable, if you can exchange the word more with a number word, then you use fleiri, fluster. So you say fleiri, birnir, more bears. Uh, inir, flestu, birnir, the most bears. Right, because you can count bears. You can say two bears, three bears. But you say meira, vatn, more water, or mest vatten or mest vatten i guess most waters god mest vatten i don't know most because tr <laughs> you, you're not counting the water molecules right you pour more water into a cup that's mehr vatten it's not flair vatten because you're not counting the molecules of water you're just it's regarded as kind of a substance that you're just making a larger amount of you wouldn't say two water right i want two water i want three water you say i want more water so if it can be substituted with a number, it's flayery fluster. If it can't be, it's matey mester. Um, I'm sure I always explain that poorly, but the ability to substitute a number is a pretty ironclad uh, 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 guideline. All right. Now another thing to talk about is we've seen how to make the word say braver older younger but how do we say older braver younger than typically we use the uh, uh the word n which means than of course yes this also means but and and in a contrastive sense but it also means than um and that is the word than and then the word on either end of it the two things being compared there's no effect on case so there there will be the same case on either end. Here are some examples from real Old Norse literature. Erthat meira and medal gersemi. It is more than a middling treasure. It thought 
and Middling Treasure Medal Gersemi are both nominative. Rauthe Melslond, Voru Betri, and Onur Lond, Suderthar is fate. The Rauthamel's lands were better than other lands south of there in the region. So both the Rauthamel's lands and other lands are nominative. Varhan Mother Miklu Eldri and Melbrig the Jarl. He was a man much older than the Jarl Melbrig. Both man, mother, and Melbrig the Jarl are nominative. Uh, notice Miklu, the dative neuter singular of Mikkel much, is often used to uh, magnify, right? It's much older, much younger, Miklu, elder. Same thing here. Borgen var Miklu sterkari in Hür on Havdiverit. The town or fortress was much stronger, Miklu sterkari, than it had been before. Notice the town is nominative. Um, there's no change in case anywhere. Var Engi o Kavari and Han. No one was more violent than he was. Der Urlu Skiotari and Thorger. They became faster. They went faster than Thorger. Ek em Vitrari and Thu. I am wiser than you. Notice Vitr is uh, wise, one of those adjectives that is R in the root. So we add the uh, comparative suffix to the R instead of dropping the R like Fagr. Odrum ehtlava ek atat skuldi hetara in mer. I thought that it would be more dangerous hetara for others, Odrum, than for me in mer. And that shows you the way that um, if we're just talking about kind of a situation, right, what we would call in English just, you know, it, right, uh, it's better for me than for you, uh, we just use, like in English, it, thought. And then, of course, uh, neuter singular adjectives to describe it. Hat tada. Now, um, there is a more archaic way of showing comparison where instead of using the word and, than, the thing that you're comparing to is in the dative. But I think that Old Norse grammars, the good ones, I'm not talking about the terrible one that everybody asked me about, the good ones kind of overemphasize how much you see this. Even in something like Hovmaw, the Poetigeta, you rarely see that formation. So the best thing to remember is uh, at this early stage of learning to read Old Norse, that comparison is shown, shown with the word than, which is Old Norse n. At a more archaic level, you sometimes see on, but you're not going to see that in like the Eddas or in the sagas. It's going to be and, so it's going to look just like the word for, for but and. Well, thanks for sticking with me through all these Old Norse lessons and through all of this one and um, soak up this beautiful piece of Colorado here and uh, for now from high up in the San Juans I'm wishing you all the very best and thank you for your kind continued support on Patreon.